keep pushing for Drew to take the throne, but he can't be trusted. He is still your brother. You're always going to be a mama's boy. So Kane is in charge now, all of a sudden. All this shit is now. I said I'm right. I'm ready for it. Because I'm ready for the fight. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm with IJ and we are locked in. You just seen the clip. Kane versus Abel, or should I say Kane versus Drew. This clash has been on the horizon for the last four seasons, and it looks like in this season finale, we're going to get that Kane versus Drew because someone's supposed to take over for the Tejadas, and we know one is power hungry, and the other one has been flying up under the radar. Now, before we jump into this and we break down what the predictions for Kane and Drew and who's going to be the throne, the heir to the Tejada kingdom, if you like power content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions like this, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and follow me on Instagram right here. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need 1,200 more. Let's get it. Now, let's jump into this. Kane versus Drew or Kane versus Abel to be the heir to the Tejada throne. The first thing we see is Kane talking about you keep pushing Drew to be in charge, to be the leader. Well, if you think back, Lorenzo and Monet both agreed that maybe Drew should be in charge because he has a little more brains than he does bronze. Now, when it comes to street smarts, of course, that's where Kane comes in. But you got to remember, Kane is also a loose cannon. Just look at this season, how he's acting with Noma when she told everyone to stand down. It's a truce with Tariq. He's talking about Effie. I didn't get that text message. I'm still going after Tariq. He told Monet when they were inside the house after Diana said it wasn't Tariq. We still need to go after Tariq. So Kane, once his mind is made up, he's going to continue to attack. And one thing we've started to notice with Kane and this being a reoccurring thing, he was upset when he found out he wasn't the oldest child and Zeke was. And he also is very, very upset when Monet starts to take Tariq's side. Now, on the other hand, we have Drew, cool, calm, and collective. He really didn't have a place in the organization. There was a moment where him and his father Lorenzo tried to roll together, but we seen Kane had made an alliance with Mecca. So at this point, Drew is finally having his come of an age story. Season three, he was kind of just there. Diana was in charge, but now Drew is starting to make plays on his own. Remember the kidnapping of Becca? That was Drew's plan. When he was trying to get rid of Monet with the medicine, that was his plan. Diana had to stop him. So at this point, Drew, he's at the He's at the point of no return. It's either me or it's y'all. But at this point, you think you can't trust Drew? He can't trust anyone either. And the reason is, is because they've been sleeping on him. And now, this is what they mean. When the quiet ones are the ones you have to watch. Now, can these brothers coexist? They could, but you have to understand. There's no Tejada organization at this moment. Noma even made Monet stand down. So these two. They got to figure out where they're going to get in. They're working up under Noma. Kane is getting closer to Noma. Drew has just been a worker, but he feels like the Tejada legacy is going to have to be carried on. And he's the one that wants to do it because at this point, we don't know where Kane is. Is Kane with the Tejadas? Does he want to be with Noma? We really have no idea. We just know he wants to reek up and out of the picture. And if so, have Effie back on his team. See, Drew, at this point, he lost everybody. All of his boyfriends, his dad, and now Diana has some sympathy towards Monet. It's just him out here. Monet's going to have to play peacekeeper between the two brothers and let him know, hey, he's still your brother. Now, she could be talking to Kane. She could be talking to Drew. I think she's going to have a conversation with both of them. Now, you remember when she was in the room recovering and Drew and Diana were in there after Kane took off? She was telling Drew and Diana, you two are both smart. And even at the end of the episode, she started apologizing to Drew, saying, hey, I'm sorry if I treated you guys wrong growing up. That's on me. That's my bad. So Monet being the mother, even though we know she's one of the most ruthless mothers in the power universe, she still has to decide. Is she going to sacrifice one son or is there a way that she can keep both of them alive and just have them coexist? Now, we see Drew and Kane. Have this face off. Now, it looks like several times there's going to be guns drawn. And Drew is telling Kane, you're always going to be a mama's boy. Because while Lorenzo was locked up, he was doing everything Monet told him. He even ran away for a while and lived with his girlfriend because he was tired of hearing what Monet had to say. We know that Monet was manipulating him and saying, well, you know what Tariq did to his dad? You should take care of Lorenzo. So Drew, 
He's always been on his own. Yeah, his mom set up Gordo. His mom set up different things in his life and was treating him bad. But he's separated. He doesn't have that umbilical cord with Monet anymore. He's making his own decisions. He's making his own plays. And he's trying to take over. And that means if you're either with him or you're against him. And right now, he's telling Kane, you're the mama's boy. You ain't built for this life. This whole time you said I wasn't, but it's really you. With all of this going on, we know that there's going to be a fight. I don't know where they're at inside of this convenience store, but Kane does pull a gun on Drew. And he's saying it all ends now, basically saying all that nonsense you're talking, Drew, since you really think you like that, then come show me you like that. But I'm willing to die behind this, and I'm willing to get rid of my brother in order to prove to everyone that the Tejada bloodline is going to run through Kane and not Drew. Now, I don't know how many times they're going to clash because there's another scene in this clip that we have that there's a gun drawn. Now, this time it looks like Kane does have the upper hand because he has Drew on the ground and he's punching him. But then there's one outside where it looks like Drew does the rush hour reverse move and takes the gun out of Kane's hand. And that's this moment right here. So it has us wondering, how is this going to play out between the Tejada brothers? Is Diana going to step in or is she going to be laying low because she's pregnant? Or are these two just going to have to solve it? Because Monet might step up and say, hey, we're going after the wrong people. We're a team. But that just depends on how deep in the game Kane is with Noma because they're getting close and how far Drew really wants to take this. Now, remember, Drew and Diana, they do have a connection with Tariq because Tariq knows that they were the ones to set up Monet. So he could form an alliance with Tariq because Kane is after him. But that secret is still with Tariq and Tariq has been talking to Monet, but he hasn't revealed any information. All right, there you go. Kane versus Drew, a.k.a. Kane versus Abel. First of all, who do you have winning? Or are both of them going to take each other out and we're just going to lose the whole Tejada bloodline? <laughs> Let me know what you think. I'm Moda J. This is about to get very, very interesting going into episode three. We got three episodes left before we take that break. This is the series finale. It's a good one. Let me know what you think. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So if I said something to make you think, or you just want to see the Tejadas take each other out, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.